Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to our devotion. My name is Wisdom Messiah Pili. Before we start our devotion, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne at this moment. We are so thankful for everything that you have done to us. Thank you for the food, for the accommodation, for the friends, and for everything that we have. We admit that it is because of your mercies. As we start our service, be with us at this moment. It is our prayer in your name. Amen. Our scripture of consideration will come from Psalm 122. Psalm 1, sorry, Psalm 121. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. It reads as follows. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. David's, David records an amazing song. He says, I lift my own eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Then he goes on to say, My help comes from God who made the heaven and the earth. I've been wondering why would this man, out of all the things, uh, tell us that he lift his eyes to the hills. Then I go to realize this, that the moment when you look a hill, he has got uh, a high plateau or a high altitude. The moment you look at the hill, your focus automatically changes. You are no longer looking at the things which are happening here below, but you are now looking at the things which are happening up there. So in brief, you are saying, I look up to God. I look up to God himself, for he is my provider. Maybe... Uh, a quick, a quick nutshell about David. David was a king. Probably a king, he had bodyguards, he had everything. The security, you can imagine, David had that in his own palace. But despite of that, he's saying, my help does not come from these bodyguards of flesh, but it comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and earth. David was a rich man, he had possessions. He could have been protected or he could have left. I'm sure he left nothing. But despite the fact that he was a king, he owned everything, his palace, he records a song which says, My help comes from God. It is a great lesson that we should learn, that we should, that whatever we have, regardless of the security or the bucket door, the bucket windows, no. It is only God and God alone who protects people. Then I asked myself again a second question. Why didn't he expect help from the human beings? Why didn't David say my help might come from my palace, from my cousins, or from the other kings of other palaces? He says, my help comes from God. I could understand the following. Why not a human being? Why didn't he say his help will come from a human being. Number one, a human being changes. Yeah, human being changes. If you want to see that a human being changes, this year, uh, not even a year is too, is, is too much. In a month, this month, someone will be your best friend, your best, best friend. But two months down the line, you are now best of enemies. Don't even talk, you can't even see each other eye to eye. Some of you are listening to here. Last month you had a lover. But as you're speaking now, you're no longer talking. It's a sign that human beings change. Therefore, they can't be trusted. Therefore, we can look up to them for our help because they change. And they change overnight. Never trust a human being. Even if they are asleep, they are dreaming. So he's just a human being without Christ. is just but a dangerous creature. It is only the presence of Christ in one's heart that makes a human being a better creature. So a human being, number one, never trust a person because it changes. Point number two, a human being can sell you out. Sell you out. You, you think they are your best friend, you tell them that secret, you know, that dark, super secret, super fat secret of yours. Then they will swear. 
take an oath, I will never tell anyone my best friend. This lies within us. But I tell you, two, three days down the line, or two, three hours down the line, you find your secret somewhere, somewhere, it's now running through social media. That's the nature of human beings. They can't keep it in one place. So David is saying, I would rather trust God, I would rather put all my worries before God because human beings can sell you out. A lot of people have been disappointed. Disappointed by their friends. Actually, it's a secret because they don't speak that thing of yours in your presence. Otherwise, it's just but a public secret. David had seen all that. That I cannot count upon a human being. Another thing about a human being, the reason why he's saying my help comes from God. Human beings get moody. I'm sure if all of us have seen someone who's moody. In the morning, they are very happy. Three minutes down the line, they are now in flight mode. You can't even talk to them. They're just giving you one with answers. That's the nature of human beings. It's in them. It's in them. It's their nature. Never trust. Even, even those who are married, we have some people who are about they'll be happy. Then before you know it, before when you think you have got it all under control, someone is now cleaning the car, they've, got, they've changed entirely. David saw all that and said, I will lift my eyes to the, to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Human beings cannot be trusted. No, you can't. You just can't them. If there's one thing I've seen in life which is difficult, is hanging a mood swing. It's just so difficult because you don't even know which button to press to bring that person back to the correct mood. You just don't know. So David said, I would rather trust God. Trust God alone who does not get mood. There's not even a single moment or a single time in the Bible where God was mood over human beings. Irregardless of their sinful nature, their sinful tendencies, sin after sin, sin after sin, he never went on a flight mode to them. That's why as you're listening to me, you have roof over your head, you have shoes on your feet, you have got food, you're not help. Despite of the sins that you are doing, it is because the God we serve is never mood. He's not a moody God. He's just a God who does not change. Another thing about those human beings, you know the human beings are full people. People are full of empty promises. Empty promises. They promise, but they fail to deliver. They are good in promising, but when it comes to fulfillment, it's another story. It's another story. Some of people are listening to me here, were once promised heavens and earth by other people, but look where you are today. Some people who are here once made us before God and before church and before everyone that time, till death do us apart. But look what have they done. Nothing. They have failed to fulfill their promises. Some people here have been promised visas to United Kingdom. You, you, know, you know, you name it, the world, visas to New York. But did you get that? They did not get all those things because human beings are full of empty promises. Therefore, you can't trust somebody who changes overnight. We can't really trust someone who can't keep it in one place. You can't trust someone who changes with weather. David, for sure, has seen it all. He says, my help comes from God. I would like to advise someone who is listening to me this moment. Never trust a person. Put your trust only in God. Put your trust in only God, who, who is the maker of the heavens and the earth and all that is within it. For in Numbers 23 verse 19 we are told that God is not a son of man that he would lie, nor a man that he would repent. God changes not. And since day one, he has been singing one song, the song of calling sinners back home. He has been singing songs, sinners come back home, sinners, it's supper time, come back home. He has even offered Jesus Christ on our behalf to die for our sins. Imagine what man of love is that? What man of love is that? Therefore, let us not put 
our trust in human beings form they will never deliver instead with human beings it comes pain comes misery you can trust your company friend or the friend you work with they can leave you you can trust your lover a lover may forsake him you can trust a parent they might just die you can trust your work a work your work might just fail might just collapse your contract might just expire so therefore i would like to invite you put your trust in god let us read another song of david psalm 20 verse 7 david says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses but we will remember but we will remember the name of the lord our god we will remember the name of the lord our god imagine some trust in chariots some tr- trust in horses there is nothing useful as a horse in times of war there is nothing useful as a chariot when we are at war but a chariot is very useless when everything is good with a horse when you don't want to move or you don't want to transport anything is not that good but imagine god god has been god has been god since day one since day one it's been god 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 and god alone i therefore encourage people out there put your trust in god david had seen it all and surely he testified that i will not trust amen being that's why we've been recorded in the book of psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he had said that even if the podcast were right around him they will not protect him it is only god only god and god alone at this moment where is your trust are you trusting your society or your burial society are you trusting your trust are you trusting your your your, your savings your investments Are you trusting a lover? Are you trusting a friend more than trusting Christ? Trust God, you will not be disappointed. Some people who are listening to me at this moment have got anger in their hearts. Simply why they put trust where they were not supposed to put it. They put trust in men, men disappointed them, men broke their hearts. It's a lesson for you my sister. Never trust that boyfriend of yours. only trust god put your trust in god he will never desert you he will never forsake you and he will never fail you then joshua says me and my house we will save the lord he had seen it all he had started he said that people are not to be trusted they just change much in the israelites were forgetting the god who has been leading them for 40 years 40 years But Joshua says that no this thing is not going to take me anywhere therefore I would rather choose God with my household it's my prayer for you at this moment choose God and live trust God God and God alone shall we pray our father in heaven thank you for the lesson you are bringing to us about trust heavenly father we plead for your forgiveness we have failed to trust you in so many instances in life We have even complained, Heavenly Father. We have murmured. We have put our trust in our minds and in our wisdom. Therefore, we plead, forgive us and teach us to trust you. Teach us to take you at your own word and also teach us to do your will, Heavenly Father. This is our humble and earnest prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.